Hello and welcome to Mad. Before we go ahead with today's show, I would like to say thank you to all our viewers and fans out there for all the wonderful letters that you have sent us. Ankita, your 3D photo frame with a shoe box is a great idea. And Dhruv, your idea of printing with bottle caps on a bag is a brilliant suggestion. See, that's the idea, guys. Our Mad Make It Easy special is all about finding art all around you. Today we shall be making inky paintings using straw, action figures with the help of blocks. In POP we shall discover unusual molds, and in the big picture we will have fun with a giant totem pole. Only on Mad cool fun art, like we have seen earlier when I used straws to create paintings. And today we shall add another new step to the same technique with which we shall be able to make some more detailed forms and their backgrounds as well. But before that, let's watch a simple blow with straw technique. Today we have brought Mad all the way to your school. So we shall be making pictures with straw and ink with a blow technique. The technique is very simple. We take our color and place a drop of it on our sheet and then we blow it around with our straw. Now let's try another color. We are merely playing with colors as we blow them around and they form patterns on their own. I have no clue as to which direction they will go in but uh, when they start moving in a particular direction then you will realize which areas are empty and which are the ones you have to fill in. So you change the direction of blow. And as you can see something very interesting is happening here. Orange, blue and red have merged to form other colors. Blue and orange have merged to form brownish color. Your red and blue have mixed to give us purplish sort of shade. So now let's see what happens when we blow two colors together. Oh nice! Our orange and blue have mixed to give us a kind of green. sap green color. So these are just random patterns. But we can also try making some more definite stuff like uh, definite shapes. See and the good part is you are not using the brush, just a straw. We are simply blowing and using the straw like a brush like this to give our pattern a more definite shape. There is another technique if you do not wish to blow but just use the straw then we let drops fall onto the paper. And what shape do you see? If you use your imagination and your creativity then there is so much that you can do with this. Trees. trees. Yeah, yeah trees. trees. Birds. No, these are yes. birds. Just with drops you can make so many things. Looks good? Yes! Let's make this a tree. We connect all the bits to form our tree. Rob, can we make this from our uh, normal paint? Right now I'm using photo ink. But you can also do this with watercolors. So let's start right away. I've got here a sketch that I have made on cartridge sheet and by cutting it out neatly, I have prepared a stencil. You can see it coming off quite neatly. I have made a crab. Now this empty part that we have got here, we shall blow ink into it. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we have placed a crab stencil out here. Now as you can see, the mouth that I have drawn here, I would like to keep it white in color. We shall have to block that area over here so that the ink does not spill onto it. For that, I have cut out another piece in the shape of the mouth. And I shall stick it on here. We shall place our ink drop on a small sheet of paper like this. And then blow it around. Okay, so now we've got one color down. Now let's remove our stencil and see what we've got. Also this tiny little piece that we had stuck on for the mouth. Now let's try another color. And for that, we stick on the other part that we have because we do not want any more color on this area of our picture. For the eyes, I have cut out another shape as well. We fix them on here like this. Now I have also cut out some tiny circles. We fix them on too. And I am sticking these on so they look like bubbles. Let's take our next color. Place a drop of blue here. Oh. 
Okay, so we have got our second coat as well. Now we'll apply our final coat for which I have picked the color green. Okay, so that gives us our third coat too. Now we can take off our stencil. We shall clean up this form a bit. As you can see, it looks quite colorful and the patterns are also very interesting. Now I shall use a marker to give it an outline. Okay, so we have finished giving it an outline. So our crab is now ready. And here comes the frame. Whatever the technique, we can create a whole bunch of new effects by adding variations to it. So while you experiment with this style, we'll take a short break. But be right back. Because after the break, we shall develop a new technique to make action figures, some new POP sculptures and finally in the big picture, a giant fun-filled totem pole. Welcome back to MAD. Make it easy special. And now it's time for some action. You might remember, I had taught you how to use basic blocks to make human figures. And today we shall add to this technique some action to make it a little more dynamic. But before that, let's check out how to make simple figures. I am going to teach you the block technique and that too in just 90 seconds. So Rob, your time starts now. First we make a block. This one is for the head. Then we make another two, which are of the same size. These are the shoulders and the chest. Another block of the same size for the waist. Then we shall draw one and a half block. This is one and this is another half. This is from the waist to the thighs. Then we shall draw six half blocks to form the legs. First these two half blocks for one leg and then these two half blocks for the other leg. Now another half block here and one half block here. That's six half blocks to form the legs. Now let's work on the hands. That's one half block and another half block and another. So with these three half blocks we have got one hand. Now we move to the other hand. With three half blocks we have the other hand as well. Now we use some tracing paper to add in the details. There's our tracing paper. In the head block, we draw an oval like this. That's the neck. These two blocks for the shoulder and chest. This one for the waist. And from the waist to the thigh, here are the knees. Now let's draw the hands. So you see, wow. it's pretty easy to draw the human figure using the block technique. Mm. Now we shall take this technique a step ahead and experiment with it a little more so that we can show some action with our human figures. And how do we do that? I've got some thermocol pieces cut out here, which I have cut out according to the sketch. As you can see,
Okay, so I have created a basic figure out here. Now we have to give this form a 3D effect so that we can add some action to it and make it a little more dynamic. And how do we achieve that? I've got some <laughs> copper wire here with me. This wire is flexible. Now I'll show you how we connect the bits. Okay, so it's come out at the other end. This first bit we have connected with the wire. Now we take another piece of the hand. Make sure you pass it exactly through the center. And here at the top will come the shoulder. Like this. Now we attach the palm of his hand. This way. So you can see that we have attached one of his hands with wire. Now if we would like to show an action pose, then you can bend it around like this. Here at the wrist. And in the same way you can connect all the pieces together so that our figure becomes a 3D figure. I'll show you when you connect all the pieces together, this is what it looks like. And you will notice that I have attached the entire model to a bamboo stick with a cork at the bottom so that it gets a bit of weight at its base and it gives our model a sense of stability. So if you would like to show him running, then you bend it a bit here like this and the other leg you bend towards the back. And similarly, I have used a separate piece to form the torso so that we can bend it too. We bend one arm backwards like this and the other one forward. And finally, by bending it around, you will get a running figure. And if you prefer to show him jumping, like we dunk shots in a basketball game. So one hand is stretched and the other one is raised. One leg is up in the air, while the other one is almost jumping off the ground. So you too can make a figure like this one and try out some action poses. And now our friend here wants to say thank you and wants to say that you go try some of the action poses. So go! Don't worry, I'm not destroying my art studio. I'm conducting a little bit of an experiment out here for my next make. It's fun time with P.O.P. <laughs> Do you remember we had used P.O.P. to make some bugs in our easy make? So today I'm experimenting with this material to see what else we can create with it. And believe me guys, there's lots you can do. Have a look at this and come right back. First of all, we'll take our P.O.P. and a little water. Now, P.O.P. is not really harmful, but it's always better to wear gloves for safety. Now, we put our P.O.P. into the water. This is easily available in any hardware store. There's no fixed proportion as such. We should just make sure we get a kind of thick liquid paste. We must make sure to mix it really well so there are no lumps. We take a small bowl like this and fit a plastic bag into it. We fill this with P.O.P. Next, we take an old marker and place it in the center. Hold the marker. Now, we take the plastic off from the sides. We leave it loose like this. I'll pour this. We are pouring it in like this to give it some kind of shape. Now, you have to hold it like this. Can someone help me? Hold it firmly like that. And till then, I'll pour some P.O.P. into these spoons. And now, in the center, we place a marble. Then we take a toothpick, break it like this. Meanwhile, our P.O.P. has dried. Hold the bowl tightly. See? The P.O.P. has taken on the shape of the bowl. And because of the plastic, it will get a kind of texture. So we let it dry a little more. This seems to have dried as well. This being a plastic spoon, if we bend it a little bit, our form will come off quite easily. Right? Did you see that? Doesn't it look like an insect? Now we try to take the plastic off our big sculpture as well. I cut it a little from one side so that we can peel it off. Now we shall paint our sculptures.
Okay, I'm done with my bug. One bug we shall place on top of this. So you too can try this at home. With POP, you can make all sorts of things like the ones we have made here. Okay, so we have experimented quite a bit with POP. And you also saw how we made bugs out of POP. Now I shall show you what else can we make with this. I've got some styrofoam glasses here with me. We shall pour our POP into them. Okay, so now our glasses are filled with the POP and as you can see I have also added a straw into it. Now to make it a little more interesting, I've got some uh, bits of plastic here with me. These we are using so it looks like uh, there are ice cubes in our drink. We put them away to dry and when they are dried, they will look something like this. I'll show you. These two are dried and ready. Like I had mentioned earlier, from this one I have torn off the styrofoam cup so we get a clean form like this with a straw and some ice cubes. And the other one, after tearing off the cup, I poured in some more POP and placed the cup in it so that when it dried it got attached to the base and it looks like our drink has spilled out of the glass. Now I shall paint it. But before that I shall draw on a basic sketch so that you know exactly what color to fill in where. I have drawn a basic outline in pencil. Now we can paint it. Okay, so I've added two shades of color. So our glass is almost ready. Now, we add some color to our drink here at the top and to the portion here as well that has spilled over. And for this I shall use a bright orange. Okay, it's done. It looks quite bright and colorful when it's painted. We have colored it to make it look like a glass of juice or a drink of some kind which is a bright orange in color and has spilled over the edge. It's very easy to pick and you can place it wherever you like and you can fool your friends or use it as a paperweight. And now it's time for a break. But don't go anywhere because after the break, I shall be showing you how I make a giant totem pole. Did you know that the totem pole which originated in North America was an artistic way of remembering cultural beliefs, legends, famous stories and great works done by indigenous people. We borrowed this age-old tradition from them and in our own unique mad style we have created a giant totem pole. Watch how we did it.
Finally, along with my friends Dinesh, Shekhar and Vikas, I managed to put up my totem pole. So what if we didn't carve it out of a tree trunk? We used recycled cabo drums. It's environment friendly. Now because of this memento, people will remember us forever, right? As a matter of fact, I've got yet another memento. <laughs> Let's add the finishing touch.